Um, I'll just go ahead and give you the floor, um, Benford Begay. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's a Benford Begay in here. I don't a she in Schlitt, touching me, but she's cheap. I need a she is a thunder, does she know it? I don't know. So thank you for having me here. Thank you for uh, bringing me on as a guest to show you guys and share with you my experience with creating uh, these Navajo language, uh, this Navajo language content. Thank you. So where should we begin? You can begin by telling us your <laughs> Navajo language creation on your YouTube. All right. So the story of how I created uh, Silly Billy Dene. So it, it's it's really a, a long story, but I, I want to give you guys the, the short version. Um, now, I, I graduated from the University of Notre Dame and my major was in uh, film, film production and TV production. So my dream, of course, is to make movies and make television shows. Uh, so when you have this major, you know, you have this big dream of creating something that takes a lot of man hours. It's, it's a very complex complex dream and it's very challenging right so I started so I actually uh, I, I traveled to China to do volunteer some time and do some volunteer teaching but while I was there I didn't have access to uh, you know the resources or manpower needed to create a movie so I thought to myself how can I continue developing my filmmaking skills and um, uh, continue to be creative without having all of these resources available. So I thought that, you know, animation or at least um, comics would be the first step to just continue um, learning the film, learning and developing uh, my skills in film industry. So my original idea was to create a cartoon which was in Navajo, but with like more realistic characters. And uh, I have some pictures here to show you guys. So I wanted to create a cartoon which was similar to um, the Boondocks. I don't know if you guys have seen this cartoon before, uh, but me and my brother, we absolutely love the show. And so I wanted to create a TV show in Navajo, which was similar to this. And I wanted to share some of the experiences that my brother and I had growing up. And so I started developing these, these characters, one based around me and then one based around my brother. And so this idea just really started with just, you know, doing what I knew, or at least writing about what I knew. But then I realized that doing this type of animation would take a lot of time because the characters are so complex and the stories will require, would require a lot of thoughts and a lot of um, maybe uh, research to kind of, uh, uh, I'll say it'll take a lot of time and preparation in order to finish. So it, it, it was really frustrating. And so I had to really break down this mm, idea into a, a more simplified uh, idea. And so instead of trying to make a Navajo TV show from uh, with a very complex narrative and very uh, detailed animations, I decided to make it very simple. And so that's when I started creating and sketching ideas for a children's TV show. And so that's when I created Silly Billy. I wanted to create a character who was not 
like a, a traditional Navajo boy who was like split between um, contemporary culture and traditional culture. And I took a lot of my inspiration from, of course, South Park. You know, their cartoons are very simplified and it's not too much, at least the earlier episodes, the animations are, or at least the story, the cartoon, it's not more, it's not too much about the animation, it's more about the story and what they're trying to uh, tell, the jokes and everything. And so I thought that was a great idea. And so I started developing the character based around that. And so that's how Silly Billy was created. So I still wanted to use the um, uh, experiences that I had as a child to um, develop stories for this character. But again, it, 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 it's, it takes a lot more time to develop a very complex story in Navajo. And so I made it even more simple. And so I made the conversations with Silly Billy in these videos very simple. So I started with the basics, like my name is, uh, he introduced his family, he introduced his clan and how old he was and so on. So from this little project, from creating Silly Billy, I found that this was a great chance to, it, it actually was a great motivation and it helped me um, build my confidence in creating and sharing this uh, material to people. So I created this character and then from that character, I decided to create flashcards. And so this was actually the first flashcard that I ever created. And I did this here in China, just with the resources that I had. So I created this character in this flashcard and I showed it to my parents and they gave me some very positive feedback. They told me that, yeah, that's a really good idea. You could expand it into something bigger. So from that project, I decided to create my own little deck of cards. This is, this is very weird. I, I don't know, I'm not hearing anything. So I don't know if I'm like, I feel like I'm just talking to myself right now. This is You're so here. Crazy. We're here, don't worry. Yeah. All right. So um, the story of Silly Billy Dinette is, is really a story about how you take a big dream and you simplify it into these small goals. You know, get, of course, my ideal dream or my biggest dream is to make a movie, but you got to start from somewhere, especially if you're going to do it by yourself. And so I had to break down this dream or this idea into its bare bones and figure out what am I capable of and what can I do or what can I use, uh, what resources do I have right now that I can use? So there are major problems with my circumstance right now you could say one the biggest thing is I'm not fluent in Navajo so that was my biggest challenge uh, and I think that's probably one thing that a lot of uh, uh, Navajo learners or um, maybe young uh, educators don't have. They want to preserve and they want to save the language, but they don't know how to begin because, first of all, they can't speak the language. So what do you do if you can't speak the language? So that's when I had to reach out to my parents and ask them for help. So they helped me uh, develop these stories. They helped me write these stories. So when you look at uh, pretty much all the books and videos that I've made, there's one person in particular who has helped me throughout this entire process, and that was my mother, Clara B. Yates. So all of my books she has written, at least I, I had the ideas behind the stories, but she wrote everything out in Navajo. And so from there, from having that script, from having that space, right, I was able to just 
take what I knew, which was just being very creative, uh, knowing a little bit of drawing techniques and uh, computer graphics techniques and mm, creating stuff that uh, uh, I thought would be useful to young learners. So that would be like flashcards and, and books. Also, I think, that, oh, Oh, okay. Um, let me stop there. Let me stop there. So let, let me stop and uh, can you guys ask me a question? Because uh, I'm kind of uh, losing track of where I where, where I could speak. Can somebody say something, please? Uh, sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't worry. We're still here. It's just kind of like, um, I guess, do you want to maybe uh, walk through? I, I can pull up your. Uh, the Facebook page and kind of like walk through some of the stuff you've done. Maybe do you want to do that? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay. okay. So, so silly Billy again, like that was, that was just a great small project to begin with. And I, I didn't really know how it would respond to people. And so uh, I created a few um, projects like the, the flashcards and I, I shared it with some people and I got a positive response and so, you know, being here in, in China, you, I, I have this unique opportunity, to, unique opportunity to see how second languages are being taught, how they're being uh, studied in, in this country, the business side, the uh, teaching methods, and all these things. And so if there's one thing in, in China that, that, that they have, like, extreme ac access to, it's English materials, English learning materials. And, and you can basically, what I basically did was take all of those, I tried to use as many of those resources that I found there and just apply it into Navajo, learning Navajo, right? So uh, I had this character and then I just said, all right, I'm gonna create a newspaper. So I don't know if you can find a newspaper. Uh, where is it further down? Or? Uh, see that picture with the uh, hats? Hats? Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a, uh... <laughs> okay, okay. Go to that orange picture, that orange picture there. Oh, the bingo one? card. Yeah. yeah. So I created, I created this. Um, it's a bingo card. So uh, again, this was something that I saw from an English language uh, resource website. And I thought, wow, okay, I'll just switch it to Navajo. And I made it simple for, I, I simplified it so that a young learner could practice or practice their listening and uh, practice their colors you know, a few words like uh, what socks or rug, car. And it was just a small exercise for them to practice their listening. And, you know, I got a pretty good response to that. People wanted more. And so I created more for them. And then from there, I moved on to a different project. I had another idea. Go to that uh, Navo Code Talker. No, the Navo Code Talker photo. So, I thought, you know, wouldn't it be a good idea to create a daily, um, uh, a daily practicing uh, exercise where people can at least practice saying the words of the day or the 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 date, the dates before they begin their day. And so I, I created this. I created a uh maybe you could say uh um, what, what, what would you call this um like a yeah like a like a, yeah a little daily calendar i can imagine it like on a on a nightstand yeah. you, know, you kind of peel it off and the next day yeah so i uh with with the help of my mother she helped me uh create the sentence structure for this for this uh short sentence and it was just so easy to just replace the, the numbers and replace the, 
the words of the, the, the days of the week. And I would just need to find a, maybe a public, a, a photo on public domain and just put that in there to kind of grab people's attention. And again, it, it was very successful. Although it was very time consuming, I mean, it was something that, you know, you, you learn at first, like it, at first, when you first create this one project, it's, it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy. But then when you do it again, the second time, it becomes a little bit faster. You find the technique, you find the correct workflow to uh, create it faster. And I think that was the great thing about doing these small projects. It was like, you're, you're, I, I was kind of, each project that I'm doing is, is like a, a warm up, or uh, I'm kind of saving these exercises when I, do you want to do this full time, right? So uh, if I ever want to uh, continue doing the dates, I know the work process. If I want to do the um, uh, bingo cards, I know the workflow. I know how I can create it very quickly and I know how to um, mass produce it. And it's the same with these uh, books that I'm making. I know the workflow. So it's so much easier to make it now than when the first time I made it. So my mother and I, we now have a system of how to produce these books. We have a system of how to produce these uh, Navajo cards. It's just that that first time when you make it, all those problems and all those challenges are are there. Do you draw these by, uh, by yourself or like... Yeah, yeah. So everything that I've, all the animations that I've, I've done, I've done by myself. Wow. And I think that was a key here. I, I did not want to get, <laughs> if, if I used an image from um, someone else and, you know, uh, it was copyrighted, then I would be stealing somebody's work, right? And, you know, I, I didn't want to do that. It, it, I, sure, I wanted yeah. everything to be mine, right? So um, I'm very careful with, with the way I approach, you know, using music, using pictures um, and, and things like that. So I'm trying to create everything that, you know, you could say is, it's, it's mine and I can reuse it. I, ha I have a question for you. Yeah, yeah, please. Hi, I'm Melvisa. I contacted you. So thank you for coming. I'm late, finished my own presentation. Uh, I noticed that your, um, your font, you have some nice font on there. Can you share with us how you get the font to work? Because normally, you know, Navajo vowels, they take a high tone and that nasal marking. And often that's, that's one of the challenges about working with um, Navajo font is, is that. Um, can, you can, you, can you tell me the one in particular that I use? Um, like this one here? Or? Let's say anything that has a high tone and a nasal. There was one that Manny had, what? like that, that red like truck right there. Uh -huh. That red truck right there. That's one I, this is um, Veranda, Veranda Navajo font. Uh, I actually downloaded that font from a, uh, um, from one of the, from a Navajo website. That was uh, uh, for your keyboard. So they had a, a font for Times Roman numeral and for Veranda. Mm -hmm. and I downloaded that, installed it into my computer. Um, I, it, it, you might be able to find it uh, online, uh, but you're gonna have to do some digging. Uh, I don't know if, how, if I could share it somehow, but that's how I used it. Mm. For the- um, but the Go ahead. Yeah, I guess for the like for the book and all that, do you use that a similar font? Like, or do you kind of design your own fonts here as well? See that one there. My father designed those uh, designed that font, and then you just we would just slide those uh, little pieces. For example, the uh, the the last e right, the the high tone or the mark there. Yeah. Um, it would just simply put 
put that piece there. So it's not its own font that I type out. <clears throat> it's actually an actual drawing. Um, but, but with my with my computer software, I'm able to um, kind of spread out the words a little bit if I need to, or you know, separate the sentences up and separate them so they're not so so cluttered together. So I think that's probably one of the important things that I was trying to focus on when presenting the material. Like you, you got to be able to read the material, right? You got to be able to read all the, the letters and uh, marks so that, you know, there's no misunderstanding, right? You know how to write it and so on. I, um, I let people unmute, so if, if someone wants to ask a question by voice, I think we're small enough that I think it should be fine to worry about that. So um, people can unmute themselves, but I guess maybe speak a little bit about making the actual episodes, the, the videos, maybe, maybe talk a little bit about that because those are also something I know that are that a lot of people have seen, like the yeah. DA show on here. Uh, okay, so I had different ideas for um, the videos. Uh, I created a, a daily practicing video. Um, that was more of like a personal thing where I just wanted to kind of encourage people to speak Navajo because, you know, like uh, I'm not a fluent speaker. I wanted to show people the, my development and learning the language. But uh, I, 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 I couldn't maintain that. It's kind of hard to. Uh, it was kind of hard to continue producing them. And then I, I moved on to the uh, movie reviews. Um, so I did what, four of those. Uh, that those videos took a lot more time to produce because you know when you're trying to comment and give an opinion, it, it takes a lot more time to translate that into Navajo. And many times the, the translation is probably not accurate but i got a lot of help doing uh, excuse me oh uh, and then i moved on to a more i guess you could say a um, modern storytelling technique with uh the grandma i, I produced three of these episodes called uh and i thought this was a very sweet and it's interesting or at least uh uh new age way of telling a story and that was by kind of telling a story through cell phone messages and it was a simple idea i mean you just have two your silly billy and grandma talking to each other through their phone and you have the dialogue there right you can kind of follow along if you want to um uh, repeat what they're saying at least you know you have a visual that can help you uh, distinguish the words, right? And then, um, again, I, it just started with a simple idea, and then I started adding a little bit more each time. So with that episode, I added pictures, and then with the later episode, I added an actual, like, video time, uh, um, uh, video or a little video time section. So they were actually communicating through a video message or uh, video chat. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's like the great, I, I feel like that was the great thing about my projects is you start with a simple idea and then you expand it to its full potential, right? So you just add a little bit more to it in the next project. So with that one, I just start with a dialogue then in the next project, I started adding pictures. And then in the next one, I added a animation video. And so I think if, if you ever were creating these, I guess these, you can call, say these micro projects, it's a good chance to get quick feedback, um, real, check your mistakes. And then with the next micro project, you can expand on it, avoid making the mistakes that you made in the previous video. And then you gain this, you, you learn the workflow, right? You learn how to start with a script, right? Right. Uh, you start with 
developing the scripts, and then uh, you start creating maybe a storyboard or the visuals, and then you take all those visuals and put it into your um, uh, computer. You find a, uh, I think this was a great, uh, another thing too, I, I, I gotta really take the time to thank the people who actually helped me out. I, actually, I could not have done this without the help of my parents and also uh, two important people who really helped me out in the beginning. And that was uh, Vita Glover. She is a, a Navajo teacher and uh, Sandra Nelson. These two women, they really uh, gave, gave me a lot of their time and their Navajo speaking skills to help me give the voices to uh, the grandma and also to Silly Billy in the the earlier videos. And so, yeah, if, if they're listening, hey guys. Uh, but anyway, um, what, are, what are we saying? What's the next question? How's, what, uh, what project, what, I guess what software do you use? Like what, where are you, where are you making all these videos in? Uh, I was using a very cheap and affordable software program called Animation, Animation Studio Pro. Uh, I bought it for like, I think $60. And uh, I think if you, there's a similar version of it uh, online, a more up-to-date version called Moho, Moho Pro, M-O-H-O, -O, Moho Pro. Uh, it's, I would say it's a lot easier to create content with that, or at least create pictures than using Photoshop. It, it's, it's pretty easy to make. You can create these uh, illustrations and you can create 2D animation. I think mean, the price of the, the most recent one is it's not that high. I think it's like $70, $80 or something. Like that. So, yeah, that's what I use. And then uh, to make the actual video, um, I was using a, uh, <laughs> I was using a, pirated version of uh, <laughs> some video software program. Uh, I, I don't know what, it was just like some random Chinese video program. <laughs> so like, again, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I don't have access to a lot of money. So you really have to think cheap or try to find resources, free resources, I guess, to, to create stuff, right? And you're always trying to give yourself these excuses. And these excuses are always stopping you from doing what you need to do, right? And so I, I didn't give my chance to give myself an excuse not to make of these videos. And so that's why I'm here today. Okay. How was uh, you? I know you. I saw some of the comments as well that you were selling some of the stuff. Did you go to flea market? How's kind of like engaging with the community and kind of the feedback? How was that? It seems like it, uh, you had a lot of good feedback with that. I don't, <laughs> I don't, it, it's hard to do. It's hard to communicate with people when I'm not there. So yeah. my, my parents, my parents are there selling my books and selling my flashcards. They're the ones that are talking to uh, Navajo educators at the flea market. So they're putting they're 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 putting in a lot of uh, time and energy into my project as well. And it's great. It's great to have that family support. And I'm very thankful for them for 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 that. Um, but I'm always looking forward to hearing some feedback from people how how and what what can be improved with these with the Navajo language projects, what they need and what what they hope we can do for the next project. And so they'll 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 tell me, they'll tell me like some of the comments that people have said. But a lot of it's not very useful. I'm really looking for good constructive feedback. Most people will just say it's cute, it's it's good, and my kids like it, they like the cartoons, but you know, it, it's not really enough for me. So if anybody's in on online, maybe you can uh, give me some good feedback. What are your future, I guess you kind of started uh, like talking about your future plans kind of so like looking forward, what are you, 
what are your ideas for silly billy and go like and just brought it and like i know you want to make some films and stuff like that so what are your plans going forward well i mean it the the opportunities are and, and are, are limitless for me i mean i i want to continue doing this full time uh well I, I would like to do this full time in the future um like each each year each year i I am creating a short film for the uh, Navajo Film Festival. And I think that's a great, great outlet to kind of keep you honest and keep you uh, uh, consistent with your projects, right? You have this kind of end goal. So each year we're, we're always trying to create a short film for the Navajo Film Festival in Deep uh, Shiprock. So we've entered that, we've entered a short film every year since that film festival has started and so uh I think they're at their they're in their fifth year uh hosting that event and so next year we'll, we'll have produced our its story and so from those short films we start developing uh, books to uh to sell for to, to sell to to young educate to educators or young navajo learners um, again, all those little side projects that I was talking about, you know, I want to continue doing those, uh, you know, uh, uh, continue do doing those, the, the newspaper, continue making these uh, free and uh, uh, free resources for people to you know, practice the language or at least get involved in the culture, right? Coloring pages, uh, bingo cards and uh, things like that so the the main the main problem with doing that is you know uh, is it can you maintain that type of uh, um, goal or at least well actually i mean it didn't stop there but yeah i mean i, I would like I, would, I i think this is probably like my life life goal or at least my my life's project and the main reason why i'm doing this is it's not really for myself it's mainly for my daughter she is my main motivation for doing this i never got a chance to really um, uh, study and develop my navajo skills when i was a child and i want to give my daughter that chance to um, learn her language, learn the culture. And she's kind of like my little practice dummy or my little guinea pig. So all of the resources and videos and projects that I have created, I'm kind of, I'm testing it on her. And if she enjoys it, then that means I've achieved something, I've accomplished something. And it, it's great. It, I think the, the best thing about, the best thing that, that the best experience that I've had so far with this project was I I was using my my daughter was using these flashcards to kind of bond with my uh, my uh, my Nella, my, uh, my mother's mother. So she was using these cards to uh, kind of just play with my grandmother. And my grandmother went pretty crazy with it. She was like, wow, you're practicing Navajo. This is awesome. And so it was great seeing that bridge between uh, this child and my, uh, my grandmother. And it, it almost brought my grandma to tears. It was really great to see that. So yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's what I'm, this this won't stop. You're going to continue to see more content uh, from from my page, and yeah, that's 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 it. Um, if you had a, I guess if someone wanted to make um, uh, videos of some kind to a similar content, or just uh, in Navajo, what would your what would your advice be to them? If they're trying to make the small projects like the ones that you make, not like it's, exactly, but you know, 
Yeah. It, it's very easy. I mean, all you need is a video camera. All you need is, all you need is, you know, your own creativity, just not add your own creativity. If, if you go online, if you go online and see all the video videos that have been made teaching the Navajo language, they kind of give you a good example of how to do it and what works, and what has, what is kind of successful. I've seen videos of, of uh, one man, he was introducing himself in Navajo, just pretty much what, we're, what, what it looks like right now his face on the screen and he just teaches you how to say hello, right? It's as simple as that, right? You just, if you have a good good um, skill in Navajo language, you just need to turn on your phone and start speaking, right? And then post it online. But from there, you can start adding a little bit more each time. I think a lot of, a lot of video makers filmmakers are thinking too big with their projects. They want to make something huge, but it is too big for them to handle. I, I want to give this example, but I, I, it's a, I want to give the example of the, uh, the puppet show. Uh, I don't know if you guys are, if you guys have heard of the, uh, the, the Sesame Street puppet show that was supposed to be produced, right? I think for a lot of us, we've been waiting for this puppet show to be released and produced to the public for, I think, five years now. It's such a big project with, with a big budget. It, it's a very high, and if it succeeds, it'd be a great accomplishment, but nothing has been produced yet right it's it's oh it's a very challenging task so you mm. take that big idea that you have and you gotta simplify it into something smaller especially if you're gonna do this by yourself and so that that's the, that that was always my approach you can't at least with these uh Navajo language projects you, you can't overthink these things and I think that was one thing I kind of learned from uh, uh, watching Daybreak Warrior. Like he has this good Navajo language skill. And I think from the beginning with his earlier videos, he just started simple. He just turned on his camera, made a video, and then he started to build on that. He started adding subtitles to his videos. And then he started including um, these type of, how do you say, he would, he would introduce um, guests into his short videos to draw people into his videos. Like uh, he was teaching the color green, I believe, and he introduced uh, the Power Ranger, the green Power Ranger, and he actually had this man say the word out, you know. So that's a simple idea and he's just using his creativity to kind of spark people's interest. And so that's where you gotta begin. You gotta begin with your one small, simple, all right, you, you take your big idea and you simplify it. You make a small micro project and then you start building on that. You expand it to its full potential. Okay. So that's my advice, I would say. Overthink things. Maybe open it up to the floor. I don't know. Um, I guess uh, see maybe Mel, Melvi, Amelia, or any of the other guests have any questions. I feel like I was talking too much. That's what you're here for <laughs> <laughs> to talk. I, I I don't like that though. I like I like <laughs> the back and forth more. Yeah. I feel like I'm just showing off. Um, okay. Anyone? Amelia? Yeah, I'm, my students are using, um, I, I, it was introduced by um, Malvatha and it's uh, Adobe Spark. And um, 
I had some students use that to create um, like short Navajo clips. And do you know anything about that um, Adobe Spark? No, is it like TikTok? Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with um, TikTok. I just know that it's a, it's, um, it's a video. So there's little slides. Um, it's already like pre-designed and um, the students just put pictures on there and then they write down what they're going to say. And so they kind of read those slides as they go through. Um, and it, it's like 30 seconds and we're planning to have them put it on um, social media, uh, mainly Facebook. So it's kind of like they're teaching how you say certain things. So in my class, it's, a, it's an immersion. I'm using immersion techniques in, in my class. <clears throat> so um, we went with um, topics and we started with eh, and then they learned some uh, sentences and how to say eh, and um, little um, ethics on how you ask like those things like that. And then we did like um, shitsis, like body parts. Um, and so the stu I have, I think like, I see three students and from my class on here. Um, and so they just do little clips. And um, we did, Melva and I uh, reviewed one the, uh, yesterday and we made suggestions and and I think it really helps the students to pronounce because Navajo pronunciation, especially the sound and the sound that is uh, and is kind of hard for them because they're not used to that. So okay. they're practicing those sounds before they, you know, read it out. And so, yeah. But anyways, but that's the one that we're using and hopefully, um, you know, I'll get more students involved in, in that um, project. Uh -huh. And it's, it's, it's to make more material because like I said, there's a, a lot of, um, there's not enough material out there. Um, so students can hear Navajo. Um, a lot of the children are not hearing Navajo. So when they, um, even though they learn how to read and write Navajo, they're not understanding what they're, reading and writing so um so that's why we're using immersion techniques and and i think um some of the students are you know really picking up fast because they hear it all the time and so they they're able to pronounce things um they just need a little bit more practice in saying it um mm -hmm. i think there's enough listening that happened now it's time to speak it so it's, it's there and, um, but I'm hoping that they would get involved in that Adobe Sparks and start, you know, producing some short clips. Okay. Uh, uh, Manuel, Emmanuel? Yeah, yeah. Uh, is that something you can pull up on your computer, Adobe Spark? Oh. Uh. Are, 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 um, is any of her work available online right now? Um, maybe I'm not sure. I don't. I don't know if I have access to. Yeah, we just we just started. Maybe. Um, let me see if I can uh, pull one up from my students' work. Um, <clears throat> it's a uh, Adobe Spark is a is a it's kind of comes with the university pays for kind of Adobe everything, which is really nice. You know, you don't have to pirate it. Um, but, uh, not that I'm not, I, I have, to, I have, I'm not going to say I haven't done that in the past, but, uh, uh, but, uh, nowadays, but nowadays, nowadays I don't, but nowadays we don't need to, we got university pay for it, but, um, the, uh, I can, I can share, I have a small clip. It's like 27 seconds. Oh, okay. Can you share it? Yeah, I can. I have to look through my, my stuff here. I have so many things open. Adobe Spark, do you guys see that uh, YouTube thing right here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, um, I think I didn't do the um, stop share. Hold on, let me do that again. I always forget to share sound.
Okay, and then this. The Ado Dinan. Your troha hot sort asks a sick of Bahanet. Ask for go da hojon de nazen. Says that gay daughter as it da hodlo. A zedich e the can. Er arco hojoni et. Your tro Melvitha chi a ye la. The neck a jayanist here. Okay, so when you. When when you make these videos, the goal is what to, for the kids, right? For the little kids? Or is it really for like a, like a university student? Mainly it's university students. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Um, me, I, I'm more of a, like a visual learner, right? When I hear the language, I, I would like to also see the, you know, writing so I can kind of break down the word into parts, right? So when when you guys, when, when I hear that spoken out, it, it's too fast. It's spoken out too fast. And it is, um, I would say also the, the music kind of, it, it's distracting. You can't really hear the, the voice over the, the music. Um, those are just my little opinions, but like if I was going to be learning that, I would hope that that audio would be spoken a little bit slower so I can hear every single sound in that word. And so I could perfect the pronunciation. Is that, is that right? So if, if I was to tell you guys a way to improve that, I would say add some subtitles on the bottom, the translation, maybe slow down a little bit. Maybe you have one, you speak it slow once, and then you speak it at a normal speed the second time. So you hear it two times. Yeah, I guess as an immersion teacher, I don't like subtitles. Um, because I want them to hear Navajo, just Navajo outright, nothing, no subtitles, um, like in English, I mean, I'm sorry, translation, I would do like Navajo subtitles, but not any translation. The reason uh -huh. why I say that is because my students have to hear Navajo, the Nebuzad, and uh -huh. for them to be looking at an English word and then hearing Navajo, um, it, it, it complicates their, you know, their that's true. That's true. speaking process. That's true. Um, but I mean, you, you don't need to add the English translation. You could just add the Navajo mm -hmm. subtitles. Mm -hmm. um, but like some teachers, they don't have the best pronunciation or they don't have that, you could say that, that teacher voice. When they say something, it, it's kind of like a mumble, right? It, it, it's not very clear. So yeah, that's why I would, again, I, I would add the subtitles. So, and, and sometimes like when you are using your microphone, like I think many, when, when, what do you guys use a, uh, um, an external microphone when you are recording the audio or do you use your cell phone? Cause sometimes um, when you use, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It's, it's um, what they're using is what they have is, and that's usually like um, a microphone from their laptop or their iPad or on their phone. So, yeah, or, so or a computer, yeah. Uh -huh. So there's a big problem with that. Like when you are using these low quality microphones, the audio becomes scratchy, right? And so it's not, mm -hmm. you don't hear the language. You don't hear the word spoken at its natural form, right? You just hear that you can hear these little buzzes or whatever. So those are little things that you can avoid, those complications that you can avoid if you, you know, uh, use the proper techniques. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. So if you have the subtitles, then it's always like kind of like a reference, right? Yeah, that's, like, okay. yeah. Yeah, I, I totally understand that, like the Navajo subtitles, um, 
to me, that's that, that I don't mind that. And so I usually have my students do that. Um, but because it's immersion, they're not writing yet. So uh -huh. um, myself and in the Navajo language department, we end up helping um, yeah. and, and, the, and their spelling and things like that. But uh -huh. yeah, I just, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I also wanted Perfect. to mention that, um, yeah, for our, you know, um, for our classrooms here at UNM, we, you know, we link a lot of resources and some of the resources that we use is some of is your work. Um, you know, we link, um, uh, we put links in our course modules so that students can, you know, listen uh, to other examples of the Nebizad. Um, we use um, your work and, you know, anyone we can find online, right? Daybreak Warriors work as well um, to try and immerse students in a lot of language and a lot of listening to a lot of the Nebizad. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, your work is, uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's great. I, you know, I really enjoy the cartoons. And Johnny, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another, there's another um, uh, author and writer in Navajo uh, YouTuber that I think you guys would uh, you would find her 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 work useful. Uh, her name is uh, Cassandra Nelson. Uh, I think she's written like four or five short stories. One was like a Star Wars a short Star Wars story, and then another one was a story about women's products or something like that. But these short stories that kids could, could um, use to practice English. Cassandra Nelson. But you can find some of her work on YouTube. And it's, it's a shame because a lot of her stuff is really good, but she doesn't uh, get too many views from those um, from her, from her videos. Uh, let's see here. But yeah, just a little shout out. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see here. So what other techniques are you guys doing to, I guess, what other projects are you working on and sharing to the public? Because I, th I think it's been, it is important that you know, institutions as big as you are should be producing stuff on a weekly or month, at least a monthly basis. Free and accessible material resources that, you know, uh, average people can use. Yeah, I think yeah. that's, um, that's well, that, that's, uh, well, this is part of that. I think our, we reaching out to the community, reaching, um, so we invite, it, it, of course, it was, it's like it was really ideal when we could do it in person, you know. But having uh, the day culture nights accessible to the community and having the the recordings on YouTube as well, so that people can uh, uh, get it, like uh, yeah, even after this is over, they can come back and hear from you and Daybreak Board who came earlier, you know. So it's uh, I guess that's a part of our community outreach for sure, of course. Yeah, we have some uh, projects in mind that, um, you know, we have to wait till summer break till we, till we get some time because <laughs> we barely have breathing time right now as it is um, mm -hmm. to um, start working on um, to for our classes to really enhance our class and then um, and then to then share it with the public. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so we have things coming up um you know here in a few in a few months and um, we'll see how it goes <laughs> we're definitely interested in um some animation work so we've been um you know talking about that talking about that with other you know other people uh, perhaps inviting a japanese animator um to come speak to us and then um so yeah, things are into work, um, but it's, of course, it's a, you know, it's a big task in addition to what we already have to do. <laughs> so. But, but um, I guess if that's I think oh, there's a see. question in the chat. Yeah, please. I need more questions. Uh, it's Renee Watchman is speaking of um, visual media resources in episode. 
what are your thoughts on the dubbing of blockbuster films? So that'd be the, the Star Wars and the, the uh, what is it, the Nemo, Finding Nemo, of course. Me, personally, I think it's great. I mean, it, like, again, you have, it, it's, it's a great, you know, way to enjoy hearing and practicing the language, right? I mean, uh, I, I hope like the educators and uh, maybe YouTubers can, this, this is kind of what happens too with, um, with uh, movies that are watched here in China. You take a scene and you break that scene into parts, right? or at least you break that scene down into the, the dialogue, right? At least the more useful conversation. And uh, educators, Navajo educators, can use that resource to teach their kids, of course, right? Teach their students. But you just break the uh, movie down into small uh, conversation sections and you go through the dialogue very fluently or thoroughly. Um, it, it, it's kind of, it's a shame that, you know, that it, it takes, what, three, four years to produce one movie or translate one movie. And I'm sure the um, uh, Navajo Nation Museum, they're using a lot of their resources to get this done. Here in this country, a movie is illegally downloaded and a external company will translate that movie into English or into Chinese or even dub that dub that movie into uh, Chinese and people can watch it or they can use that movie to practice the English, right? So it, it, I wish it could be done faster, right? I wish uh, the process could be faster. So I think one of the, the, the yeah, okay, yeah. So it, it's great, I agree. think it's great what they're doing. This but it, I mean, I think like if, if, if any of those uh, people are listening now, I think they should try to find a um, uh, a cartoon to do. Maybe it's something like Peppa Pig or um, you know a, a children's cartoon that they can translate, so that there's you know there's a lot more episodes to do. The, the dialogues are a lot more simple. Um, kids can watch those over and over again. I don't think a kid would want to watch Star Wars or um, the Fistful of Dollars like every single day, right? Maybe maybe Finding Nemo, but like my daughter, she can watch Peppa Pig like, every day and she won't get tired of it, you know? Yeah. Um, any other questions? Um... Uh, if if anyone else doesn't, I think uh, I guess it would... what I would like to ask uh, the uh, ask you guys a question. Do you have a what What is your opinion on the the I guess you could say those micro videos that are being produced um, by uh, some video makers? They uh, do like these funny. Um, Navajo dubbing of films. Uh, so, for example, I think there, there's a bunch of these out. So, like, one would be a one video is of a woman. She kind of puts her face through a filter and stretches her face out. Her 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 um voice sounds like a, a chipmunk, and she's speaking or telling jokes in Navajo. Yeah, she's telling jokes in Navajo. And then there's another one of a man who will kind of dub these short clips from famous movies in Navajo. I think there was one in one for like Terminator and mm -hmm. other movies. He does a funny voiceover for these videos or for these movies. Do you have any thoughts and opinions about that? Do you think those are useful to a Navajo language learner? That's one I want to ask. Maybe. I'm not sure. I, I, if they're, 
uh, <laughs> I, it, uh, maybe if you're putting on TikTok, I don't know if you're on TikTok, you know, the, the, the short videos like that. But I mean, I think that's like anything's good, you know. All, yeah. all more language is good is is good language, you know. So I can't. It's like I think lots of different, like from th- many different fronts, you know, to get uh-huh. um, to reach different stages of le- learners. But that's, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know. Yeah, language. Yeah. I mean, the nebizad, like any language, is used in so many different ways. And um, you know, if you're able to make jokes in Navajo, you're definitely a speaker. And um, I, I don't know. I I think they're great. I mean. They might misconstrue, you know, they might stretch out their face and stuff, but um, it's the language part that I listen to. Um, you know, the guy, the, the, I think it's a guy or a couple that dubs over, you know, they talk to each other's, you know, their, um, their language is very sophisticated. And it's, you know, it's a high register of the nebizad. And, and, you know, and we want our learners to get to that level of speaking Navajo. So, that would be an example of, you know, of a high, you know, high registration use of the nebizad. Um, yeah, joke making jokes, you know, playing with the language. Yeah, that's the very sophisticated work right there. But that's, you know, that's my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. And it's also an example of how language is used. Right. Uh-huh. We don't want it. We don't want to, you know, restrict language to just subject, object, verb, you know, this is a rock, you know, and a lot of our and we do that a lot. You know, we want to see that flavor. We want to see the spice because the language, the nebizad is so sophisticated um, that, you know, that that it's too sophisticated. I mean, it shouldn't be reduced to that for learning so you know and that's and for that reason when these kind of videos are out there when people are talking you know sharing jokes when people are just talking in daily conversation you know the richness that the language contains it, that's when it shows and you know and that's and that's the stuff we don't teach either you know and that's the stuff that we try to incorporate into our classes these small word parts that are just scattered all over the language and, and it makes the language, you know, that you can, you know, um, and when you reach that level, uh, and that's something we wish, we want our students to reach that level. We want our students to continue to, to study, learn, practice um, the nebiza so they can become the, you know, those kind of speakers. So um, I don't know. So I, you know, I enjoy listening to them, you know, as a speaker, um, they're hilarious. Um, so yeah, like, like Manny said, any language use is good language. <laughs> I mean, any language use is good. And, um, and it's just an example, another example, another register of how the, nebi- the nebizad is used. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's good for the, um, for learners to see, you know, the different, yeah, exactly. Different registers. That's how you know, less linguistics terms, but the, like different, the different like ways, the different, like so you can like like simplify it down but also like how expansive it can get you know and also like yeah it's, yeah, it's not limited to like just one yeah like one type of speech you know that's what writing is just type of speech you know so so there's many different ways to use a language it's a multi-purpose tool you know it's a uh, well it's as as, as as it's it can be used for literally anything you know so it's a uh, that's uh even if a speaker even if a student, uh, the student might, at the time might be a little like you know above their, above their comprehension, you know, so you can like get exposed to uh, all the possibilities of the language that they're learning, you know. So, so yeah, it's it's it, yeah. I think it's yeah, exactly. It's like all oh, language is good language, you know. For linguists, we love language. You know? Can somebody yeah. uh, post a link? I've never seen that one. It sounds like fun. <laughs> I, I I guess Melby. I don't know if you know. But, I don't know how to find them. They just kind of get sent to my inbox. <laughs> so, well, it's at six. It's at six oh eight p.m. here. Oh. Uh, I don't see any other questions. Um, let's see in the chat. If anyone is dying to ask a question, please ask it now. Um, 
you guys have any questions for me, that'd yeah. be great. Too. I can if keep not, going. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and then if not, we can wrap up. But also, um, Manny, did you, did you share a link to uh, his um, YouTube page? Don't forget yeah. to subscribe. I'll, I'll right do that. I'll do that right now. I have I have that up. I'll put your Facebook page as well on your extra website. So if there are any students or any people out there listening, or at least they have this dream of wanting to produce it, but they don't know, or at least they are scared or fearful of creating anything. You know, my my, my door is always open. Like, I, I've helped. I've helped different um, uh, um, video makers and Navajo language learners or Navajo language educators create some content for their videos or for their uh, Facebook pages or their. Um, I've created illustrations for other people's books, and I really enjoy collaborating with anybody who is interested in, you know, uh, creating artwork or creating projects who are involved in these Navajo language projects. And I think the hardest thing to realize is that, you know, that it, it, it's kind of hard to find people who are willing to help you. And it's not just based on money. I've asked for help from so many different people and it's, it always it, it, money always becomes a huge factor in that exchange but after like after searching you you find you can finally find people who are willing to help you out from you know from the kindness of their heart right and i think that and that's that's what i want to contribute to this like if, if there is any student out there who wants to need help creating their videos Send me a message and I can share with you some ideas. Maybe I can help you produce a video that you've thought of creating for a long time. Okay. Yeah, well, that sounds that's uh definitely a, an awesome opportunity. And I uh I post I posted your YouTube, Facebook, website, and email. So there's no shortage of ways to get in get in touch with you. And um, definitely thank you for coming. And uh, as someone who's definitely as like as a learner who has uh, used uh, your stuff, it's uh, really great to hear from you, and I'll definitely look forward to seeing what comes next. But if that's it, I guess we can close out. Maybe any last words, Melby or Amelia? But uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for your valuable information and your valuable skills. Um, I'm sure that uh, some students would be interested in your um, your assistance. Definitely. And thank you. All right. Uh, last thing before I leave, uh, I want you to see my students. These are my students in my class. <laughs> Those are my students. I was actually having class right now. Yeah, I, I don't know if we mentioned it, mention it, but uh, uh, Benford's in all, coming coming to us all the way from uh, Hunan province in China, where it's the morning of it must be the of the next day. So Thursday morning, I'm not sure if it's Thursday or Wednesday. I don't know how yep. the time zones work. Thursday morning. Thursday morning. So he's coming from he's a time traveler coming to talk tell tell us yeah. about his video. So it's um it's definitely uh, very much appreciated. Uh, but so yeah, been it for as far as you're concerned. <laughs> nope. Not for us, but for y'all. But I guess yeah. uh, Melvi, anything else to say? Yeah, just thank you. You know, thank you for presenting. Um, we'll probably most likely be in touch with you um, when it gets closer to the summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. Um, okay. Thank you.